Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to the Send and Receive Gmail. In this training, we're gonna show you how you can receive emails in Excel from Gmail and we're gonna show you how to send emails from Excel into Gmail. We've also got this really cool tab feature we're gonna be showing you and we're gonna show you a ton more how to view attachments and emails. It's gonna be a comprehensive training. I can't wait, so let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining me today. I've got a really ton to show you. I've got a really special one. We're gonna continue our theme this month on using Intergrammat. Intergrammat is an amazing automation application we've covered. We're gonna to continue to cover it for the next week or two because we've got so much to show you. We've done a few trainings about that each week. I'm gonna bring you something different, but something that has to do with Intergrammat. I'll show you what that is if you don't know what that is coming up soon. So this week, what do I want to show you? I want to show you the power of Excel and how you can actually control Gmail with it. We can send emails from Excel and then track them in the send file. We can also receive emails automatically and display them and show them how we can do it in Excel. We've got an amazing amount. We can show you how to create a new email, refresh, send new emails, and reply to existing emails. It's going to be an amazing training. So we, let's get started right away. I love to bring you these trainings each and every week. So you haven't done that yet. Please do subscribe and click on that notification icon bell. That's going to get you alerted to our new trainings to make sure that you never miss an episode. Each week is different. Each week is special. And I bring you Excel like you've never seen it before. If you do enjoy programming with Excel and making incredible applications, there is no better way to do that than the Excel for Freelancer mentorship program in this specific program I take you through every single step of creating your own applications and that's starting off with the defining phase where you're gonna learn how to create and make the best applications possible for your target customer and then we're gonna cover the design phase in this phase I'm gonna take you through every possible step design flow charting and how to create an amazing application scope then we move into the development phase and finally the deployment phase where I'm going to show you how to secure and license your own Excel applications. I'm going to be creating an amazing accounting application, which we're doing now. It's going to include an incredible and comprehensive invoice like you've never seen before. We're also going to have purchase orders to be able to create purchase orders and control inventory, a full and comprehensive customer information screen along with inventory and vendors. We've also got an amazing dashboard and a comprehensive user sharing and sync along with that so that you can share and sync your applications across the world. If this sounds like something for you, I'll include the link down below. My Excel mentor will get you there. That will help you create a passive income stream using your Excel skills. I can't wait to help you with that. All right, let's get started on the training because I really do have a ton to cover and I want to get to it right away. I really, really try to create these applications while you watch. I know you love that, but in this particular application, there are just so many features. If we do this thing from scratch, it will probably take three to four hours and I want to, I value your time. So I want to bring you and pack as much value as I can in a short amount of time. We try to keep these around an hour. Sometimes we go over. Rarely do we go under. But in this particular, there's so much. We've got this incredible tab feature. We're loading emails. We're replying to emails. We're going to use Intergramat. We're going to use Gmail. We're going to use Dropbox. So many features in here. So I created this before. I'm going to take you every step so you know exactly how to create this application. If you like this application, you can download it from the link below. I'm going to include the link below. It's absolutely free using your email or Facebook Messenger. We'll get that to you right. Go ahead and check the link below. I'll make sure that's there. All right, so let's get started. So what do we want? There's a lot of features. Let's run through a review of the features. Basically, we have a single database that's going to track all of our emails right here. Everything's here and this is both sent and received. So we have an email ID. It's a unique ID that this is going to come from Gmail and it's generated by Gmail or it's generated by you and it's just a date and a time. If, if we're going to be sending out the emails, if we create a brand new email and we send that email out, it's going to be generated by Excel and we'll use the date and time for that so that it's unique. We also have the type. It's either going to be received or sent and then we have the date and time. That's either the received 
or it's said date and time. We have the from, who's it's from, and then the to. Then we have the subject, the message, and attachments, if any, and the status unread and read. I like this because it's in bold if it's unread, but if you want to click on it and click bold, it's going to change that, and then when you click back, it's unbold. So I really like that. We can also freeze the first row. That way we can scroll up. So if we go into view, freeze panes, and freeze it, it's going to, we can now scroll up so we can scroll. It's automatically sorted on the base. We can delete emails just by selecting and delete. It's going to delete it automatically, refresh the list. We're going to create this cool tab feature where it looks like we got a nice tab. We can also select on these. If I create a brand new email, I just have to create a new, send to, uh, any kind of to. It's very simple. Just use an automated. And we'll test the subject and test the message and then click send. It's automatically going to send that application. And then it's going to be tracked in the sent. Now it's been updated. So now we have a sent and it's been sent and it'll be received. All right, so there's a lot of features. Let's walk you through these features. We've got a refresh. This is going to refresh. If there's any new received, it's automatically going to come in here. How do we do this? Well, let's go briefly through some of the code that I've created. Then we're going to jump into Intrigramat and see how we can do that. Intrigramat, again, we've been over this just last week, but if you haven't seen the episode, it's this application here called Intrigramat. I'm including the link down below if you want to sign up for it. There's a free option and it's a really amazing application. So we're going to create tons and tons of automations in this. We're going to go over some of them using Gmail, Dropbox, and really a whole lot of features. So I'll include the link below. This is how we're going to create our automation. This is how we're going to do both. We're going to send an email to whoever our recipients through Gmail using Intrigramat. And we're also going to receive our applications and receive our attachments through Intergramat inside. So we're going to show, we're going to walk you through every step of that. So don't worry. We're going to use that and we're going to use our Gmail account. Okay, so back into the application we go. Let's go over the basic summary. We've got some basic form macros here where we can reply. What that's going to do is going to take whatever we're currently on and it's going to automatically insert a few spaces and then go down and then you can mark your reply here if you decide to reply. And we've got a new email which is going to clear everything out and then we can also add an attachment onto that. So if we have a specific file or something we want attachment, what we can do is just simply create a we can use a dropbox right we can uh, let's just take copy dropbox link then we can place that link right in here into this and then just paste the link in there we can use that so now it's going to be automatically sent via dropbox i'll show you how that works subject we can have when we send it and of course the send to we choose the email Okay, so let's get into the code and see just how we do that because there's so much to feature. I don't want to waste too much of your time going over the overview. Let's take a look into the developers tab. If you don't have this tab available, you can find it and show it and display it into the options you would go and depending upon the version of Excel, customize ribbon, make sure that developers, I'm using Excel 2010, an older version, so that you can use it with any version you want. Developer is going to show up here. Just make sure that's selected. You can use Alt F11 to also so get to shortcut to get you into Visual Basic. We're going to go into Visual Basic. Now, this is some on-sheet code. We only have a tiny, tiny bit of on-sheet code, and that's based on the selection change. Why is that? Well, when we make a selection, we want to do a few things. We want to load that information. I do need some additional information. I need to know, remember, all of this here is not stored here, right? So this is not, so I can delete this. It's no problem because it automatically comes from our email database. So when you're designing these, we really, if you want to sort and filter, and if, usually you can add sort and filter onto this, but when we separate our data, notice our data is on a separate, it gives us so many more options. We can create really cool tabs. Now notice this is kind of a tab feature that's really cool. If you take a look at here, notice the columns aren't being hidden. The rows aren't being hidden. So how do I create a tab feature like this with nothing being hidden? Because I just clear out the data and change the data. That's all I need to do. And all I'm going to do is change this label. The receipt is going to show from, and then it's going to show to. So the only the data changes. It's a really cool way to do it. And I just use shapes. I'll go over that with you. But it's got a really amazing effect, and it works really well. And all we need to do is just change the data. So you want to really, when you're designing these applications, you want to try to keep the data away from where the user is actually working with. When we separate the user interface, what the user sees and what they work with 
Then the original data, it gives you so many more options, whether you're sorting, filtering, changing it, uh, you know. So basically all this is is a filter. All we're doing here in our email databases, we're filtering. I want to know sent, some are sent, some are received. Most of them are received, but these are sent. So all I'm doing is going to run an advanced filter based on whether it's sent or received and then showing only the received here and only the scent here. So it works really well. It's got a nice little effect on it and it's really user friendly. Somebody who can look at this, even if they don't know much about Excel, even if they never used it, they can clearly see that they should click on one of these tabs to show it. So it's very, very user intuitive. And that's the kind of applications I'm trying to help you design so that you can create those so that anybody can walk up and start using it. That's what I'm that's what I'm trying to get you to. Okay, so let's go ahead into the code. So basically inside this particular code, all we're doing, if a user makes a change between, makes a selection change between D18 and H, I guess 999, it doesn't really matter here. I put 899, that doesn't matter. As long as it's a large row, very large, right? In case you can use a lot of emails. And we also wanna make sure that when they select on something other than, you know, if D is not, if there's no value in D, we, we don't want anything to happen. We always want to use D, the one that's required. Notice we're always going to have a two and we're always going to have a received, right? We always have that. So D is always going to contain a value. So when they collect on something, but D doesn't have value, nothing should happen. Only when D has a value should we then load that email. Also, that reminds me, let me go ahead. I've got some hidden numbers here and I'm going to show you what that is. I'm going to change the font back to there. And these are the kind of things that get hidden when you don't want the end user to see, but you do want for training purposes, I'm going to show you that. We're going to use conditional formatting. Okay, so now you can see the numbers here and you can see the read or it. That's just additional data that the user doesn't know to see. And the reason for that is when we have something that's unread, we're going to use conditional formatting. So all I need to do is select here then I need to know the database row. I need to know the original database row. This is where all the original data is. So if it's unread, all I need to do when they click on it is change it to red, change it in two places, change it in the original data and change it right here. So as soon as they click on something, notice it's red. Notice this one on line 26, it says unread. But as soon as I click on it, it's gonna to change to red. That way I can use conditional formatting based on that. What does that conditional formatting look like? Let's just highlight some rows, go into the home, conditional formatting, manage rules. And I'm gonna show you, we only have four rules. So let's just go over these while we're at it. And the one that I was just talking about is the first one. We're gonna edit the rule. And basically what we wanna do is we wanna use the column which should be fixed and absolute and the row should not be because we want this conditional formatting to apply to every single row in our formatting. The only thing you need to make sure of is that when you applies to, your applies to also must start with 18. So anytime I, column I, in any row starts with, it contains unread or is equal to unread, I should say, then what I want to do is I want to put format the bold. And that means the original formatting is not bold, it's just regular. So we're actually going to bold it through conditional formatting when it says unread. So that way, as soon as it's changed to anything other than unread, it's going to automatically change the font. The selected row, our selected row is located in B4. VBA is going to, as soon as we select a row, and I'll show you in the code, B4 will change to whatever row the user has selected. So the conditional formatting we have here, which is going to be a dark maroon with a white bold font, it's going to change automatically. The rest are alternate rows based on based on two conditions. One, if D18, 18, 18 being relative, meaning every single row in our conditional formatting range, also with odd rows mod row of two equals one equals one means odd rows equals zero would mean even rows so that's how we call the alternate rows whether it's white or whether it's kind of this light pink that one those two those are two control our alternating rows and you can stretch this for whatever range you want so that's it for the conditional formatting just four rules are going to get us this so in vba as soon as i click on something some things are going to happen we're going to change this to unread we need to know the original and i'll show you how we get that we need to know the original database row 58 57 those are the original database rows let's take a look at this one 55 notice 55 here is showing unread but as soon as i select it here it's going to change to red here and we go back into the database we're going to see it's changed to red here so that way when we reload it 
and I go back down, it's automatically going to be red. So all we have to do is change it in two places, and we do that in the code. So let's continue on with the code. So B4, when those two conditions happen, they've made a selection between D18 at H and D in the target rate equal empty, then we are going to put B4 and we're going to run the macro called email load. Email load is going to take care of everything else. So how do we handle that? Let's just take a look. We have some email management macros and inside this particular module we've got a few different macros we have email load email reply email delete and email attach open and email new so we're going to go over these pretty briefly on these because i do want the focus to be on intergrammat and the functionalities between that and we've been over that these kinds of things before if you've watched my videos this one we're not going to focus on the form management too much how we load in the form but i do want to cover it with you so you get familiar the first thing i want to do is define the selected row and the email row i need to know both right i need to know what row they've selected in this case 27 and i also need to know the database row in this case it's 58 so we need to put those two into variables so we're going to do that with these lines of code focus on sheet one b4 if b4 is empty that would mean the selected row uh, there's nothing we can do without knowing what row they've selected on so we want to make sure that assuming it's not empty we can then assign it to a variable called selected row and i can type in here selected row okay so now assuming we have a selector we also need to do something else we need to make sure that there is a database row in that selected row and that would be column c and the selected row so we want to check that if that is empty then we also should exit the sub so if c in the select row equals empty then also exit sub. if there's no database row where the main email is stored there's nothing we can do okay so once we have that we can sign the email row to there so now we've got the email row and the select row now we can continue our function we're going to take application screen updating we're going to turn it to false that makes things quicker and reduces the flashes and things like that so it helps when you use application screen updating false, you must always make it true. Make sure that there's no exit sub anywhere in this code. If it is, and you exit out before actually click, before actually entering the command line screen updating true, your application is not going to be updating. So make sure. Notice that I've put it after my two exit subs. Exit sub here, exit sub. Now I'm going to make it false. And all in these uh, five different lines, all we're going to be doing is taking the information from the database, taking the information from here, all the information, and putting it in these forms here. That's pretty straightforward if you've watched my videos. All we're doing is just line taking the information, going from the uh, from and the to, the subject, the message, the task, and we're putting it in these form fields here. So that's it. That's all we're doing with those. Next up, I want to make sure that we set, when we load it, we need, now need to set it to red. It's automatically, it's been loaded, it's been read. So we want to set that. Not only do we want to set it in the database to, to, no, not only do we want to set it in the database to load here, we want to set it in the current sheet. So both the current sheet, sheet one, where we're loading it, and the database here, both of those we want it. Next up, I want to do wrap text false. Why is that important? Because if I don't wrap the text, if I, for example, if I take something like here in the message and I go in and I unwrap the text, it's gonna expand way too far and that's really not something we want. So we want to make sure to always wrap the text equals false. In this case, wrap the text equals false. That's really important. That way, uh, it will always be on the same, each row will have the same width. We want to keep that width consistent. What else is there? Well, we've got a lot. Let's take a look inside the code again. Now, after that, I also want to update these button sets. Why do I want to update them? For example, if they've clicked new, I only want a few buttons to show. I want this button to show, which is called send email button. And then, of course, the refresh is always going to be shown. But when they load it, I don't want to send it, right? It's an existing, they can't send an existing email. So I want to make sure that send button is hidden and I want to make sure that the least that the buttons that are used for existing are displayed reply email button I want that displayed I want to display one that's called new email button and I want to display one that's called delete email button those I want displayed on load but on new or reply I want to make sure that those are hidden so how do we do that well we do that with just a little bit of code here every time we load one I want to make sure that the send email button here is hidden and yet the other three new reply and delete are all displayed and then of course we do application screen updating is true so that's all we have to do now how about reply we've got another reply how do we do that again when i want to reply to an email let's say we're loading one i want to reply to this email 
I want to click reply and what I want to do is whatever was in the from where it was from I want to make it to the send to so whatever was here before I want to switch that for example notice how it says from Randy at Excel for freelancers as soon as I click reply that's going to be my two and then I want to take another email which is the default email address let me show you the defaults I'm going to scroll over here and I've got some information here that's going to help us through this and I've got really four additional information email folder that's going to be our Dropbox folder where our email is going to be sent we have an attached folder our attachments are automatically going to be sent from there and we have an archive folder where emails are going to be sent once they're archived and I have a default from that's the email address where we're going to be sending them default from so it's going to take there our default from is going to show up here I also want to take the subject and whatever subject is here I want to add re in front of it to it regarding specific subject re in the colon and whatever the email message was I want to take that email message I want to drop it down a few lines and I want to show up here so when I click reply for example I want to drop down a few lines put in re and then switch the email so how do we do that well that's in the code it's relatively simple so the first thing we're going to do when we use email replies we're going to focus on sheet one I want to turn off screen updating g3 again I want g3 going to be equal to e3 that means whatever was in the two is now going whatever was in the from is now going to be in the two so it's going to set the two email address also what I want to do is I want to set the default email so it's going to come from L6 that's where our default email is I'm going to take whatever that whatever's in L6 here and I'm going to place that right inside E3 which is going to be our from so that's going to take care of our from it's going to set our default email I also want to clear any attachments and then I want to take the subject and I want to take whatever's currently there and all I want to do is add RE colon and a space to whatever subject was there then I want to take whatever message whatever was in the, then what I want to do is whatever I want to take whatever message was in e7 and I want to add a few lines above we can do that with new vbcrlf that's going to add some new lines above as and we're going to include the whatever the value so it's going to add two new lines that's going to use the enter or carriage return it's called and it's going to add that and it's going to replace that is going to be the new value of e7 which is going to be our new subject again we're going to take wrap text equals false just to make sure that our lines remain consistent then we're going to update our button set in this case I want to show the send email button and I want to hide the remaining buttons I want to hide new hide reply and hide delete and then make screen updating false that way when I load an email it's always going to load the right buttons and when I click reply it's going to do just that adding the RE updating the email addresses and then adding additional information so they can now write their information here okay great I'm glad I got to show that to you what's next we have delete email this is pretty self-explanatory basically what we need to do is when we delete an email I need to know the original database row and then we're going to refresh it so when I click here we're going to click delete here it's going to take whatever's on 66 and delete it in this case it's going to be right here so we just do that click select we determine the row when we click delete it's going to delete it and refresh automatically so and it's going to get of course you're going to have a new 66 and new it's going to refresh automatically so how do we do that well again we need to determine to make sure that there is a selected row and then we want to make sure that we actually have that selected row and make sure that there's a database row if c it doesn't equal empty then we can continue on we select the row in sheet two that's our database we're going to do entire row delete and then what we want to do is mark b7 equals received that I want to know if are we on the received or are we on set refresh there's going to be two macros I'm going to go over those very shortly with you and those two macros are received so if this is received I mean it's going to look to b7 what's in b7 b7 is going to keep track of what tab is open so as soon as we click receive it's going to make sure it's received as soon as we click sent it's going to send because I need to know what macro to run I've got two different macros one that's going to update the resent messages and the other one's going to update the receive message so I need to know which one is currently active and we can use b7 to let us know which one is active okay so let's take a look at that so b7 is going to have so if b7 we're going to run the macro received refresh that's a macro we're going to show you otherwise it's sent refresh then we're going to go into the email new so as soon as we delete it, it's going to go into the email new screen again I want to run now we're going to focus on attach open attach open is relatively simple if we have 
a specific file that we have as a field, we can click open. It's going to follow the hyperlink either within a browser. So sometimes attachments can be in a browser. It's going to show this in a browser. Or perhaps if it's a file in our folder, we can just click the open and it's going to open it. So how do we open that picture? Well, the first thing we need to know is where they are stored. If it's, for example, an HTTP file like it is in our sent, we, we're going to have to browse for it on the internet like this one. But if it's on our received and we have it inside of one of our folders, which will, I can also do, then I want to browse for it. But we can do that with just a few lines of code. The first thing we need to know is where the attachment folders are stored. In this case, they're stored on L4. So that's important to know. So let's take a look inside that macro. Take a look at the email attachments open. We're going to define the file name as a string. Sheet one is sheet one G5 is empty. There's nothing we can do, right? There's nothing to open up. For example, in let's say it's pull one that's an open and we try to open it, it's going to let us know there's nothing to open on here. Okay, so we have that odd just in case it's empty. If it's not empty, then we can continue on with the code. I want to check if it contains HTTP. Is it a browser type? Is it, does it contain a URL where we're going to launch it in a browser or not? So if it is, if it's going to be a browser, then we can use the entire file name here, G5. Whatever's in G5, we can open it up. Otherwise, what we need to do is we need to parse it. Whatever's in G5, if it's just the file name, I need to know what folder it's stored in. It's going to be stored in whatever folder is located in L4. That's our attachments folder. All we need to do is add that to the backslash and the file name. Then we can use a single line of code to open up either, whether it's in a browser or URL or whether it's in a file. We can use this workbook, follow hyperlink, file name, attachment, hyperlink. That's going to open up regardless. So that's going to open up the attachment based on regardless of whether it's in your computer or under, inside a URL. Okay, I'm glad I got to show that to you. Moving on, the last one we have is email. I'm moving through quick because this is not the focus, but I do want you to understand. Email new, what we're going to do is we're going to set the default from. That's going to come from L6. That's the from email address I showed you. Clearing all the email buttons and clearing all the email fields and updating the button sets to only show the send and then hiding the new reply and delete. So when we click new email, that's going to, it's going to clear all the forms, hide the buttons and set automatically set our from. That's it. That's all we have in the email record. So let's get into actually how we're going to be sending it and how we're going to be receiving it. So let's take a look inside our macro. We have something called send and receive macros and we have a send email macro. So let's look into the send email macro. This is the one we're going to be focused on send email. What I basically want to do is create an HTTP get and I want to get the information, send the information over and I want to send, what do I want to send? I want to send the send to, I want to send the subject, I want to send the message, I want to send an attachment. So I want to send all that information to Gmail and then which Gmail is going to forward over. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to use Intergrammat and Intergrammat is going to help us do that. And I've created a scenario and then I'm going to create another one and show you exactly how it's done. The first thing I'm going to show you is a brief summary of what it was. Let's go out of here. We don't need to see the picture of the nice beach house. Okay, so Intergrammat, here's what we're going to do. We, we want to do is we want to create a brand new scenario. So what you want to do is sign up this account. If you don't have it, you can sign it up just it's free. Just go ahead and click the link below. Sign up. It's a free account. You're going to come to this dashboard. So you want to create a new scenario. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to create a new scenario. So we click on that. And then it's going to say, well, what do we want to do? We want to use a few things. We're going to use something called a web hook. So let's click that web hook. We want that. And what else do we want to use? I want to use Gmail. So we're going to click that Gmail. And I want to use one more thing. I want to use something called HTTP. That's going to help us with our file attachments. So all three of those. So now we're going to continue. And the first thing we want to do is a web hook because that is what's going to listen for our hook from our, when we send it through the macro, we're going to be sending a web hook. It's going to listen to it. So the first thing we want is a custom web hook. And we're going to get this custom web hook right here. And what we want to do is we want to add it. So we'll create an add and we'll just call this test hook. You can give it any name you want, doesn't matter, and then click save. And then as soon as we save it, what it's going to do is it's going to give us this hook here. This entire hook. So this is the one you want. You want to copy that to the clipboard here. Then well, I'm going to walk you through this code, but this is where it's going to go. You see this web hook right here? This is the one you want to paste into it. So we're going to paste it right there. Whatever the hook is, paste it right there up until the question mark. That's what we want. So this is the information we're going to actually send. 
then what we need to do is we need to run this macro so let's create a brand new email and run it because the next step inside Intricomat is it's going to be listening right now it's listening we want to send some information so it knows what to do with it so let's create a brand new email and send it so the first thing we're going to send to let's just send to my other email address so that way I don't bother anybody and we'll call this test 25 and then we'll we can actually put an attachment in let's go ahead and put in an attachment I've got this picture here so I'm going to use Dropbox and I'm going to uh, use a shared link so I'm going to click copy Dropbox link and I'm going to show you how to do this automatically one day through Intergrammats can help us do that as well so I'm going to paste that link right in here that Dropbox link and then I'm going to just call this test email message and keep it simple here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click send now if we right click sign the macro we see it's called send email so that's the macro that I want to run so I'm going to click send and it's going to run that macro now what we're going to do as soon as that macro is we're going to listen notice it says successfully determined it's found it it's listened to it and it found it so now we're going to click OK now I want to add something else I want to add because we're dealing with a specific attachment I want to use HTTP and this is going to help us with our attachment. So what do I want to do? I want to get a file. I want to download the file from a given URL. That's what I want. I want it to, to download the file from the URL. Now we could use the URL directly, but Gmail will handle this as an attachment. So there's a few things we can do. We can easily, it'll send it automatically as it. So it's kind of a nice way to do it. But you can also send it inside the email body. There's many ways you can do it. So I'm showing you one. So what I want to do is I want to click attachment. That's the one I'm looking for and click OK. All right, so the next thing I want to do is add Gmail. Now let's click add one and let's click Gmail. That's the one. What do we want to do? We want to send an email. So that's what we're going to focus on here. Now notice when you add a connection, I've already got mine connected, but you're going to need to add it. So when you add a connection, we're going to go in here call this test connection. And when you add it, the important thing is what you want to do is you want to connect Gmail. So this is going to connect it right away and once it's not connected you also want to make sure that you have click allow but you may not get this because it's you're going to need to get this client id and client secret here how do we do that well let me show you exactly how we do that well the best way to do that is to go through something called console developers google and i'm going to include the links down here called console google developers Google so let's create that I'm gonna walk you step by step through the process of authorizing Google so that we can get that client secret and so we can get that let's go through the step by step the first thing you want to do is log in to their Google developer log in using the same email that you want to be sending those Gmail from that's very important if it's the first time that you've ever created a project gone into this you'll see the create project a button here called create project so but if you don't have that if you've created a project you can find it through here my projects and what we want to do is click new project so either new project is going to be here or it's going to be located here either one so the first thing you want to do is click on that and click on new project and then what we want to do is we want to give it a name so we can give it any name let's just call it any name is okay in this one so we'll just call this integramat and then let's call it test okay so then the location doesn't matter much so let's call create click create and that's going to create it and the next step once i want to do it so i want to enable the gmail api and we click on the api services so enable api services so that's going to click here click there and once you click there we want to search for gmail because that's what we want to connect we want to connect the gmail api so search in gmail and that'll find the gmail api once we do that what we want to do is we want to create the credentials so we want to click enable and so once we enable that we're going to then go to the OAuth consent screen OAuth so let that enable here once it's done it's going to take you to this screen called OAuth so then what you want to do and then click create credentials once you're in this screen we're going to go over to the OAuth consent screen here and let that load up and then what you want to do is select external and then click create that's going to put us through the OAuth consent screen so the first thing we want to do is give it an application name let's just call it Integramat and then what we want to do is go all the way down here and click add scope now once we add a scope it's going to give us all this information of all the things that we want to allow Integramat to do so the first thing what we want to do is 
Google doc, gmail.com. That's going to allow us to allow Intrigue Math to read, compose, and send your Gmail. Then what we want to do is click on the metadata. We want to allow it to metadata. We also want to allow it to insert information. So we're going to click on insert. That's going to allow us to insert mail in the mailbox. Also, let's try labels. We want labels to send and modify too. So we want to click send and also to modify because that's going to allow it to create. So we want all those. Let's just go over those. We want to use compose, metadata, modify, Gmail send, google.com. This one's important and insert. So once we have all those, we're going to click add. So that's going to give us all of this information to add. Then what we want to do is we want to add add an authorized domain. So what is this uh, authorized domain here? That's the one we want to add. We want to add intergrammat.com. So I'm going to paste it right in here, intergrammat.com. That's the authorized domain. And then we're going to click save to apply those changes. So that's going to save it. So once it's all saved, we're going to click credentials. Now I want to click credentials here. So once we're inside the credentials, I want to click create credentials, create credentials here. And we're going to also click on OAuth client ID. That's going to give us the authorization here. So once we click that, we want to fill out just a very short form. So the first thing we want to do is app, we want the web application. We're going to focus on the web application. And we can give it a name here. And we'll just call it Integromat again. OK. And next up, what do we want to do? I want to scroll down and look for authorized URIs. Authorized URIs here. So we're going to add them here. And we want to add one, one called integromat.com OAuth CB Google Restricted. That's an important one. That's one uh, important. Once we add that, we can click Create. So that's going to create our authorization for one more step. So we're almost done. Now we've got our client ID and client secret. So we're going to now it's going to assign us. So now what we're going to do is we're going to copy this one. We're going to go back into our integration. We're going to paste it right in here. And then we're going to go back into our secret and we're going to copy our secret and we're going to paste it right in here. Once we have those, we can click continue. So you click continue and you're going to see another screen and you're going to select the account that you want the Gmail on. Make sure you select that account properly and it's going to say this app isn't verified. That is the correct. That's the proper process. Click advance and go to click the go to increment unsafe. That's correct. And then it's going to say allow. Then you give it allow. And then you says, and then allow once again. And there we go. Now we have it. Now our Gmail is now connected. Okay, so once you get both that client ID and client secret inside here, just as we went over, thanks, now we're back live. I want to show you exactly how we can do it. Once we have it connected automatically, then what you want to do is once you've added in your secret code, now you can add a recipient. What is the email address? That is going to be the send to. So we're going to drag that send to. We want the send to and the send to. Click add. What next? What is the subject? We're going to drag our subject. We're just click our subject. What about the content? I'm going to click message. Just clicking, it's fine. You don't even need to drag it over. Great. So what about the attachments? In the attachments, we're going to click HTTP get a file and click add. That's going to add a file. And that's going to send that file automatically. So that's all we have to do and click OK. Now that we have that, now let's take a look at that. Now what we can do is we can click Run Once. And what that's going to do is it's going to continue checking and listen for it. So now let's go ahead and send that email. I'm going to run that macro once again. And now it's listening for it. So now what we need to do is create an email. So let's create a new email. And again, we're going to send it to my other email here. And we're going to just give it, a, let's call it Test 30. and we will add for attachment. I think we can use this same attachment and just copy the link and then we'll call it test email message. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to click send and that's going to automatically send it. And let's go take a look inside of Intermat. It's got one, one, and one. Notice that those just appeared. So if we take a look at them, it saw this Dropbox URL. It got it, right? And then let's take a look inside here, which says it got it. It got all the information, the output, We've got the input, we've got two, notice the two, it's Randy at Excel for freelancers, BCC is MB, the attachments is already here, notice the attachments and file HTML is here, and we have a test, test 30, so all the information went into Gmail. All right, so let's take a look in the email and see where it is. Here's my email and it got it. Here's the file HTML. When we click on this and click open, it's gonna open that picture just as I sent it 
and all the information is here so here's the test email message here's the subject here so everything made it from my gmail into my other email okay perfect that's exactly what i want all right so we've got the email there okay so we know that 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 the sending works but how about the receiving now let's continue on just to make sure so how are we going to get this to work automatically back into the air so now once everything is set and once we have it set sending it from the webhook sending the file through http into gmail gmail is going to run the sender for us we're just going to turn this on and we want to activate it immediately we can activate it at regular intervals let's just activate it and then it turns on notice it's on now so now in our scenarios well actually we can save it first click save here and we can close out the history so saving it's going to save it back into our scenarios we can see that it's now running i've got other scenarios here integration webhooks you can also rename this right you can move it a folder you can rename it you can do lots of things what okay so now we've got it let's just go into the code real quick and take a look at how we did that we understand that we just pasted the hook in but how does that work well let's go through that just so we can know let's drop this down a little bit so we can see both and i'll pull up the application behind it and then the code so we can see a little bit of both the first thing we want to do is dimension ot object http as an object next up the from email sent to message subject url i want a bunch of strings that we're going to need to define and then the email row is long we need to know the email row. so the first thing we want to do is set the object object http as create an object ms xml2 server xml http that is going to set that object to allow us to send that webhook we're going to focus on sheet one so we're going to get all of our variables sent to attach subject those are all going to come from this cells here pretty straightforward message what i want to do is just in case i want to replace any character 10 with a br why do i want to do that because that's going to automatically change it from the normal carriage return which is in excel which is called character 10 to br with the black slashes and that's the html code which is going to convert it to html so that when it's sent in gmail the line breaks are appropriately covered so notice we have a line break you know some of these emails we have multiple line breaks we want to make sure that those line breaks in here which is character 10 get converted over to html and to do that all we need to do is replace the excel character which is character 10 over to the line break which is br in html code that's how we do that so that's just for the message next up what we're going to be doing is we want to send that information all we need to do is send it to the webhook so we're going to take that webhook which we copied over then we need to set the send to so the send to this is the label here send to equals and then the variable send to equals and then the variable we're going to follow that pattern with all four of the information so the send to the subject is our label equals and then the and and then our subject variable this contains the actual subject same thing for message and the same thing for attachment so we have four of them so four things are getting sent over to the gmail next up what we're going to do is we're going to open and we're going to use get and it's going to get the url that's what we want get we're going to set the content header type equal to application backslash json that's the kind we're sending over then all we need to do is just send it object http send that's going to send all the information then once it's sent all i need to do is add it to the email log i want to take all the information here and i want to put it here and i want to put it in the first available row so i want to use the time as email id i want to use the sent make sure it's sent and then the date and time actually from to put all the information here and if there's any attachments put it here so how do we do that we do have just the first few lines of code this will get us the first available row here so we have that then what i want to do is i want to send the format now possibly using current date and time that's going to be the current date and time that's going to be our email id you can use anything you want in there as long as it's unique i guess and then what we want to do is this one's going to be sent right we're actually sending it; it's not received so we're going to set the send status i want to set the date and time to now and then i want to take all the information from sheet one and just put it in e3 g3 all the information and put it into the appropriate column d e f and g it's going to take all the information and just put it here relatively straightforward i want to set the red status here it's red it's going to send we'll put it as red because it's sent you know receive get on red and then i want to put the row number that row number we need that's important because when we bring that information back we also have to bring the row numbers so i always want to add the row numbers and sometimes we use row number just sometimes we use 
the formula. Like notice it says a formula. Why are we using a formula? Because when I delete a row here, I need to make sure that these row numbers all update. So we're using a dynamic formula here that's gonna automatically display the row number even when we delete a row number. So that's kind of important. Okay, so next up again, I wanna set the wrap text. We wanna make sure that we're wrapping the text accordingly. And once it's wrapped, what I wanna do is then update our button sets, right? It's no longer a new email, so we need to update. We need to hide the send email button and display all the other buttons. That's it, that's how we send email, very easily. But what about receive? And then of course it ends up in our sent. As soon as we have sent, it's gonna end up here in our sent. So what about received? How do we actually receive Gmail and have it into Outlook? And for that, we're gonna use Integromat also. So let's walk you through the steps on how we can do that. So back into Integromat. And this one we're gonna use actually Gmail Dropbox. Why are we using Dropbox? In this case, what I wanna get is I wanna have a Dropbox called Archive. I wanna have Archive for all of our in this case, I want to have all the, G all the emails appear in one of my Dropbox called Gmail emails. I've got that folder already. I want them all to appear here because they're going to come into Dropbox and then Excel is going to take a look inside there for any new emails. If there's new emails, it's going to take the information and it's going to put it into the archive folder. It's also going to take a look in another folder for attachments. It's going to put any attachments inside here. So how do we do that? How do we get the attachments in this folder? And how do we get the emails inside this folder here? Well, I'm gonna walk you right through that. Let's take a look at that. Integromat's gonna do that for us. It's gonna do all the work for us. So let's create a brand new scenario and I'll show you how we're gonna do that. First thing is we're going to use, in this case, Gmail. We need that. So let's click that. We also need to use Dropbox. You'll need a Dropbox account. It's free if you don't have it. It's one of the greatest software. I've been using it for 10 years. All right, and we'll continue on. We've got those two. That's gonna be sufficient for now. So the first thing what I want to do is I wanna click Gmail. And what do I wanna do? I wanna click watch emails. So I wanna watch for new emails. And first of all, where do I want the folders to go? Which folder do I want? I'm just gonna watch the inbox in this case, but you can filter out. So we're gonna just click all, all mail or inbox either way. Let's call it inbox. I wanna look at my inbox and you can have detailed Gmail filter so it only imports some based on certain filters but I'm just going to use all emails or I'm just going to say let's call it only unread emails so that we don't get any news and mark email messages as read I'll keep that as no and then maximum two numbers and then of course we also have advanced settings where we can send a specific sender email address or specific subject or church phrase so there's lots of ways that we can go in that so we're going to keep that pre pretty simple so we only want only unread keeping at only those that show up in our inbox and only unread emails. So that's what we're gonna do. So click OK. And now what do I want to do? And now it's gonna see, do I want it from now on? I don't wanna process any old emails, but you can. If you wanna pull old emails, you can pull all the emails, but I'm just gonna keep the ones from now on. Click OK. Now what do I wanna do? Now I wanna create a different router because I wanna take some of the attachments. I want the attachments to go in one folder and I want the emails to go in another folder. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create something called a router. And once we added the router, now we're ready to do the second step. What we wanna do is we wanna do two things. We wanna save the text file email to a Dropbox. I wanna save the attachment. Well, let's start on the text file first. We're gonna click on Dropbox here in one of them. In this case, we wanna upload a file. When we click upload a file, we wanna select the, what you wanna do is you wanna add your Dropbox. So click here, you won't have this yet. So you'll click on a Dropbox, you'll click continue and this pop-up's gonna come up. It'll connect your Dropbox. You'll click allow and it's gonna automatically connect your Dropbox here. Then what you wanna do is click on a folder. I've already created the folder, so you'll click on the public here in this case and where you wanna put that actual email. In this case, I wanna put it in Gmail emails. And what about the file name? Now we get some choices. In this case, I want a unique file name. So the best way to do that is to put in something very unique. So I'm gonna use the Gmail message ID, but not just the ID alone. I wanna make a text file of this. So I'm gonna use .txt. Okay, so that's great. That's a unique file name for each, but what do I want inside that data? Well, now we can put the information in. What do we want? I really want five things. Let's take a look at what we want. We want, I want to put the from, I want to put the to, the subject, the message, and the attachment. Everything else we can do through VBA, but this I want to get all from Gmail. So how do we do that? Well, we just add it inside. The first thing I want to do, of course, is the from. Who is this from? We can go back down here in the headers, 
we can look here and that's going to be the sender email address the email address i'm going to put that right in here but i also need to separate this information how can i separate this so that each field has a separation well i'm going to use something unique let's use double dashes here so now that i have the sender email address what else do i want i want to put in who it was to so we're going to use in this case we're going to deliver to so i want that information again with the double dashes and then what do i want i want to put in the subject so we'll click on the subject again double dashes and then I'm going to put in the actual text content. Now that we have that, and the last thing is I want the file attachment name. So I'll put in the double dash as a separator, and I'm gonna scroll down here and look for attachments, and I'm gonna drop it down here, and I'm gonna put in the file name here. Now that's just the file name, it is not actually the file attachment. That we're going to do next. That is in our next step. Click OK. That covers it for our text, but I need more than that. I need the email attachment as well. All that this does is put this attachment name in our database. It doesn't actually put the entire attachment. I want the actual attachment inside Dropbox. How do we do that? We can use that. We're going to use it actually in something else, part of Gmail. And this one is going to be called Iterate Attachments. That's what I want. That's all I need to do. Watch them for attachments click OK. So now what we're going to do, click on that transfer should not be the last, obviously it's not going to be our last module, that's OK. What we want to do now is add that to Dropbox. So here we're going to add another with Dropbox and this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload a file. And in this, what is that file? I'm going to click here to choose a folder and this one I have a specific folder called attachments inside the public. So we take a look at, I'm going to call it Gmail attachments. That's what I want. Now what do I want to put in there? Gmail is fine. We can actually put in the name of the file. That's all we need. We can also map it to when we click it. We do want to overwrite so there's not an issue. We'll overwrite in case there's a new name. That's fine. We can overwrite it, but we don't need to map it. Just overwrite and then click OK if we want to map it. So but either way, it's good. So now just click OK and now we have our information. Now what I want to do is I want to send an email and run it and see what it looks like. So let's go ahead and send that. We can drag this over here so we can see it. Again, let's review. We're watching for emails. Once the email arrives, we're going to do two things. One, we're going to send all the email information to our email in a text file inside our Dropbox. We're also going to take any attachments. We're going to put in a separate folder inside Dropbox. All right, so let's go ahead and create an email. I'll use my Outlook in this case. Okay, and I've got a file attached here already. So now we're ready to send it. It's going to send to my Gmail from Excel and we've tested it. So let's go ahead. But before we send it, what we want to do is go back to Instagram out here, click run one so that it's now looking for it. And let's go ahead and send that email right now. Okay, now we see it. It's inside my Gmail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click run once here and let it run through. And we'll see it's got it's got it's sending its information here it's sending its information to gmail and it's sending its information from dropbox so you can watch it actually work okay great and we've got a history now let's take a look inside our dropbox file i would say i sent the same picture so it's going to be here so the picture's in there and what about our text file let's take a look at that that is in here now it's in our gmail let's, let's take a look inside double click on the text file and take a look at this we have our from we have our to we have our test we have a subject and we have test we have everything here and we have the image separated by so all the information automatically came here okay great now we have it in a text file now what we can do is we can set it to run now it's already automatic so let's go back in here we know it's working turn this to click on when do we want it we can have it at regular intervals every 15 minutes on the free versions every 15 minutes you can be even faster if you want that's okay for us now we'll stay with that now it's on so now we go back into scenarios we have our two scenarios that we created they're both running one sending one's receiving and they're working okay great so now we've got it in the text file now we've got the picture and how do we get that into excel well let me go ahead and show you that and I'm going to run you through the macro that actually pulls it from the text file, pulls it into this database, and then brings that into this form. Let's take a look at that now. Inside the VBA, we have a macro called send and receive. So this is the one I'm going to focus on. I'm going to focus on check and receive emails. This is the macro. This is the same macro. When we click refresh, it's going to bring that email. Notice test 36 is now in here. You see that? That's the one we just created. If we click on here, 
there it is all the information got loaded here okay great so how do we do that well let's take a look inside the macro we have to check and receive emails what i want to do is i want to get that information i want to get all the information from all the emails so i want to loop through all of the possible text notice it's gone now notice it's gone because it went to our archive folder so we take a look inside our archive folder we're going to see it right here it's now in our archive that's what i want i want to save that information put it in our archive but i want to before that i want to loop through all of the emails inside this folder and bring them all into the database so you know if you haven't turned it on overnight all the emails will come and their attachments will come into excel and the associated dropbox folders okay so how do we do that let's get into the vba and walk you through step by step text count as long as email count i need to know how many and i need to run the email count row as long we need to go through and figure out what email we're going to be loading it on and that's in our database so we need to that's going to be long i need to know where to put it okay so continuing on in our code we're going to dimension the file name the file path the email path the archive path and the text string we need all those paths i need to pull all those paths especially from here we need to get them all from here so of course we're going to get the the email folder where the emails belong i'm going to pull it from l3 the attachments folder from l4 the archive folder we're going to get that in l5 and of course the default from in uh, l6 we won't need that okay so we need all that information that's going to come in next up once we have that i want the email data as a string we're going to use an array to grab all the data from that string so we need to define that as a string an array string okay with sheet one we're going to focus on the archive path as an l5 as i went we're just going to add the backslash to that here we are also going to get the email path i'm going to add a backslash to that the file name we're going to set the file name meaning any file that meets the criteria it means any file that ends in txt the asterisk before that means the wildcard means that any file that meets those conditions and we're going to do run a loop and that loop's going to be called do while and that means do those actions while their file name remains active meaning there's actual file in the folder that meets those conditions so we can start our loop and the first thing that i want to do is get the file path the entire file path it's going to be the email path along with the file name those combined is going to be the entire file path we can open that as a text file and then get the first line which is all i want the line which means the total text inside that area and the line input text string i'm going to put all the information in that in that text file all the information right here we're going to put that into a string all of it in a single string and we're going to call that text string okay so everything's going to go in there into text string once i have it then what i want to do is i want to parse it okay so i've got it now now i can close it because i've taken i've gotten all the information i've put it in this text string now i'm ready to close it now what we want to do is i want to get the first available email row i need to know that first available row we're in sheet two our email database in this case it's going to be row 72 but we're going to use a as a column because a is required that's going to get us our first so we know where to put all the data and i want to put in an email id so where's that email id it's going to come from our file name did you notice that this archive file name has this all that email id is right here all i need to do is remove txt and our file name is here that's going to be our file id our unique file id because we named it in dropbox we automatically named it okay so moving on so sheet two we're going to get our first email row then we're going to get our email id and all i need to do is take the file name we've already defined the file name up here all the way up here and all i need to do is remove or replace txt and replace it with nothing once i take out txt i've got the file name i'm going to put that in column a in the row next up i want to put the word received it's been received that's an email that came in it's not sent it's received i'm going to put the current date current date and time i want that to go in there i want the status it's unread we haven't read it yet so that's status and i want the row that row is going to go in column j it's going to go in a formula right so now i have all the information other than the data so i put in the email the type the date and time i've put in the status and the row so the other remaining five information from to subject message and attachment are all going to come from that text file that's all we need to do we just need to parse that it's very easy let me walk you through that the first thing what i want to do is i want to set it as a string we're going to use that double dash remember you could use any couple of characters really just make sure they're unique remember that double dash that we separated now we're going to use that what we're going to do is we're going to use split we're going to split that text string by this and that's going to 
put it into an array. Email data is now an array. Now all we need to do is loop through that array. And in an array, the first value is always zero. We're gonna go through five of them total, five we need, zero to four, that's five. So all I need to do is, we've got our text count going through, looping through each one. So all I need to do is put the first one in column four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. So how do I get column four? If I know I'm on the first iteration, which is zero, if I add four, it's going to get us to column four. If I add four, it's going to the second one. So that's all we need to do. Let's take a look inside that. So we're, we're creating a loop, zero to four. Then what I'm going to do is the email data, the first value, the first value, of course, that's going to be our from here. That's going to be zero, right? Zero is going to be our first one. So if I know it's zero, where do I want to place it? I want to place it in column four in our row. So sheet two cells, we know the row, email. This is zero, this is four. So that's gonna put the from right here because we're going, I want the first value in our split, the first value. The second one's gonna be one. As we loop through these, the second one's gonna be one. Where are we gonna replace one? One plus four is five. So that's gonna go in, that's gonna be the two. So we're gonna go through each one because we've separated it. Let's take another look at that text file so you're familiar with it. Right, so I've separated each one of these by this double dash. So this is zero. Our first one's always zero. Our second one is one. Our third one is here, right? That's the subject. This is all the message here. All this is the message. And then our fifth one is separated, is this one image. So we're gonna separate each one of those using our double dashes. And then we're gonna iterate through that array, putting all the data inside the row. Okay, great. Now that we've done it, now what I wanna do is I wanna place the file in the archive, just in case it is, it is already in the archive, which it almost should never be. Of course, they're unique. But for our testing purposes, there were a few duplicates. So I just wanna kill, if, there's, if that file is in our archive already, I wanna remove it. So the archive path, plus the file name, we're gonna kill that, delete it. But if it's not there, it would create an error. So we're gonna wrap that on air, resume next, and on air go to zero. Once we know it's not in the archive, we can then copy that to the archive. So I'm gonna take the original file path, which is here, and I'm gonna copy that over to the archive plus, archive path plus the file name. That's gonna copy the email file to our archive. Then what I wanna do is I wanna kill it. I wanna delete it from our current file path. That's it. Clear out, this is gonna set our next file name, clear it out and set the next one, and then we can loop. So that means we can do this for every single text file in our email. It's gonna, and each time it's gonna create a brand new row because we're getting the first available row and that's all we have to do it. Now all we need to do is run the macro called receive fresh. So what that's gonna do is, now we have it here, now all I need to do is get that information inside our table here so that we can see it. So how do we do that? Well, again, all we need to do is run a little bit of a filter, an advanced filter, because I only want to see the received. I don't want to see the sent. So how do we do that? Well, we set some criteria. I've got a criteria here just for our received, and it's called type and criteria. Then what I want to do is I want those results. I want to get the row, and I want to put all the results here. All of those results, put it right here. I want the row number exactly in the same order as I want them here. Now notice, let's notice there's something else important here. Notice there's something blank. Why is there something blank here? There's blank here because this is a merge cell. Notice G, there's nothing in H. So I need a blank column before I put the red. So if we're gonna have a blank column here, that means I need a blank column in the results. It's easier, it's not absolutely necessary because I can just copy all the data over. But how do I get the results in a blank row? The best way to blank column. The best way to do that is to include a blank on your original data. Notice this is our original data. It's gonna create an error if I try to copy it over, but what if I add one more column, a blank column? Then it will allow me to then have the results in a blank column. So that's just what we did in VBA. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run our advanced filter. Here's our criteria here. Then we're gonna run our receive results. I'm gonna take all of our results. I wanna sort them before I send them over. I wanna put the newest first and the oldest last. Once they're sorted, I can bring them over into this. But the first thing we wanna do is always wanna clear out the information, clear out, delete any emails that are here already before I did that. So what? that's what I wanna do. And again, 
I've done the same thing here. This here is a shape. It's just a little shape. And this shape, the color changes as I click on it. So when I click on scent, I'm going to run a macro that's going to bring all the scent over. And then I'm also going to color this red and color this gray. If I click here, I'm going to color this shape. This is just simply a shape that I've created. What kind of shape is that? If you enter the shape here, you're going to see it's just a double rounded. This one right here, it's called double rounded same side corner. So that's all I've done. This type of shape here and then just colored it, added some text very simply. That's all I've done. And I've played, made sure that the color of the header is the same color as the top. So that's the way we can have it. So now when I click on these, it's going to change. So let's see how we did that inside the macro. Let's run through the next macro so we can see inside the VBA we have received refresh and now sent is almost exactly the same just a few differences last email row if we're going to run an advanced filter i need to know the last row of the database in this case of course it goes all the way down here we're going to use the first so it's going to go all the way to 71 we want that last row to run our advanced filter so in case it's nothing we need to exit out the last email row if it's not if it's less than three then exit the sub because that means there's no data now we're ready to run our advanced filter a three through K in the last email row, an advanced filter. The criteria range is just what I was talking about, R2 through R3. Here's our criteria because I only want received criteria row. So once we have that criteria ready to, I've got the results, I've got two different results. I've got results for the received here and I've got results for the sent here. Easy just to put it in different ones. So that's it. So I want the from here, the row, the from, subject, date, and time, message, and then the status is going to go almost the same thing here, except here I want two, right? The difference is in two. So in receive results, I'm going to bring in all those results. So we do that with an advanced filter. And then all I want to do is copy two. So we got the copy two range. And where am I going to copy that to? U2 through AA2. I want unique is true, although they should always be unique. Now what we want to do is once we have our results, I need to get the last results row. I want the last results row. In this case, it's 64. So we want to get that, put that into a variable. Now, if it's less than three, then we need, there's no data, so we can exit out of it. However, if it's there is data, we can continue on. So we're going to application screen updating false. Now I want to sort it. I want to sort it based on here. I want the newest at the absolute top. In this case, it's going to be X3. That's our newest record. And I want to sort it descending. So the largest or the newest is the top and the earliest is at the bottom. So how do we do that? We're going to run a sort. So the first thing you want to do is clear any sort fields. Sort fields clear. And then with sort, we're going to do sort add a key what is that key remember i want to do sheet two here it's very important even though i've done with sheet two up here why is that because we're already on with sort so we're within another with so we do need to specify the sheet in this case x3 that's the one i want to sort it based on that time and date i want descending the largest at the top and the smallest at the bottom and then what i'm going to do is set the range it's going to be u3 which is our first row of data all the way through aa and the last results row then apply after we do this, they're automatically sorted. Then it's just a matter of copying over the data. We did clear out the data, hopefully. Sorry, I didn't go over that. Sheet one, we're clearing out the existing data. Sheet one, we're clearing it out and setting the header from. I forgot that part. So all we're doing there here is setting this to from. It'll change to two on two. So we're setting this from, and then we're just clearing out all the data. C through I, just clearing it all out. That's important. So we just skip that. Okay, moving on, but that's kind of obvious next up what i want to do is i want to bring all that information over from the results so c18 through i in the last result plus 15. why 15. notice this one starts on 18 but this one starts on row three so we need to compensate for that difference so we add 15. okay so we bring in all of the data over that once we bring in all the data we can do a few things i want to wrap text as false making sure that the entire range we don't want to wrap the text i want to keep those rows with the same width then what we're going to do is set, uh, we did that already from here. We don't need it twice. We did the from here in the header at the top, so we don't need it down here. Get rid of that. Okay, and then I want to set is received. I want to set the tab so I know that tab is, what tab is displayed. I want to set that in an off column. Notice these columns will be hidden. A, B7 would be seven, setting that to receive so we know which one is displayed. Once we do that, I want to change the tab colors. I want to change it. This 
we'll change the tab color to automatically to that red. How do we get all this code? All we need to do is run a macro. It's very, very simple. So let's just say I want to know what color to change it to. All I need to do is turn on a macro, run the macro, and then let's say I want to set this. Just go into the format, whatever color I want, shape fill. Let's say I want to set it to this color, just like that stop the macro and take a look at the module that got created that's the easiest way of doing it that's going to get us so we look into module one we take a look here and then it's pretty much code instead of with selection we're actually using a specific shape that we've created notice we've already given them a name of this sheep sent tab so instead i've just replaced it placed it with those shapes with those so when we look in the code again let's click on it and reset our code back there okay so how do we do that it's pretty simple so after we run the macro it's going to get us all the information that we need we can delete this module we don't need it now just click remove module and click no we don't want to save it so back into that we in this case we're setting the fill for the receive tabs to be that dark red that's the accent that we gave it and then the other one we all i did was run another macro to get all the information but this one's going to be the sent tab and this is going to get us that fill of gray that's all we need to do Sent refresh, that's it. Set screen update into true. That's all I have to do. Sent is exactly the same except a few differentiations. We don't need to go line by line in code, but the only differentiating factors is we're using a different criteria here and a different results. Notice we're in the sent. I'm using this criteria here, the criteria sent, and then the results are here. So I'm bringing that over into that. So that's how we do that in the sent. So that's going to bring it all the way over here. And then, of course, we're setting the header to two. In this case, we've got that. This one we don't need here in the scent. We don't need this from, obviously. That's going to go. Okay, so we're going to set the header to two, and we're setting B7 to true. That's all we need. Again, we're just doing the opposite. In this case, the scent tab is going to get that dark red color, and then the receive tab is going to get that gray color. That is it. That is actually how we create this amazing dynamic application to both send and receive gmail thanks for sticking with me on this extra long training if you appreciate these trainings i would love if you can pick up the 150 application workbook that's 150 for just 56 dollars if you get that that's going to help us out a lot thank you so much we'll be back next week with a brand new training if you have anything you might want to see through intercomat let me know i may continue with that theme next week based on your ideas thanks so much and we'll see you next week